Hello, this is Billy Cor here again from the Carolina Circle Mall Wiki. Today is Friday, February the 27th of 2015, and in the last video you got to see me unbox this um, Packard Bell PV1750 CDT um, 486 mini tower computer. And in this particular video, we're actually going to be setting the thing up. What we're going to be doing is adding this five and a quarter inch floppy drive to um, this bay right here and we'll be adding this CF card adapter to the back of the machine into one of the expansion slots along with this particular CF card right here. Get the stuff out of the way. Now I guess the first thing we need to do is uh, start taking it apart. So um, let me flip it over and we'll get started. Okay, these are going to be kind of tight quarters, but um, I think we can manage, so let's go ahead and um, get this taken apart. Um, these Packer Bell Mini Towers, the, uh, they come in two panels. The side panels are, what, are also what keeps the bottom um, of the machine together. So we've got to unscrew from the bottom to get into the goodness inside. So we'll go ahead and start right here. I can't really see it, but I will. Try not to lose these screws, but if I do, I'm sure I can find some others that are lying around here. I do so much of this stuff. Okay. And here's the last one. Okay, uh, screws out of the way. And we just have to, first you need to take this bigger one off. That's the main one. And now we can take this other one off. Okay. So we can just take the camera off the tripod just to show what we got inside. Okay, um, I can see the battery pack William added. This originally came, yeah, I do believe this has 8 megabytes of RAM in it. There's the uh, Socket 3 486 processor, typical Packard Bell sound modem card. And this is the PB450 motherboard. There's the CD-ROM drive. It's a double speed, I believe. And um, that's the hard drive caddy, which does not have a hard drive in it, but we will be adding a CF card. In fact, we won't be needing this at all, so um, why don't we just go ahead and get this out of our way. This is what I did to my Legend 822 CDT when I put a CF card in it. I just took this dri drive cage out to give things a little bit more room. There we go. I can save that for a rainy day when I, if I decide to put a hard drive back in here or any other mini tower Packard Bell that needs it. So yeah, the same motherboard as the Legend 20 CD had, except this one actually works. <laughs> Supposedly, I still haven't powered the machine on yet. So, we're going to be adding the five and a quarter inch drive down into here and putting the CF card adapter into one of these slots here. So, let's go ahead and um, position the camera back upon the tripod. So, yeah, this, this Packard Bell is just another one that's in really good condition. It's just missing the spec sticker, but oh well. Uh, let's see, what should we do first? Uh, let's put the uh, five and a quarter inch floppy drive in first. So we'll need to uh, figure out how. I've done this before on these. I need to figure out how to get the uh, blanking plate out of here. I 
probably need a five or a quarter inch screwdriver, but it's on the other side of the room at the moment. Okay, I'm going to do this here. I don't try this at home, but I'm actually going to use the knife from my pocket knife to pry this out. And it worked. <laughs> okay, now there's a little uh, metal blanking plate in here that we'll have to remove. There's really nothing to it. I think you just have to play with it until it decides to come out. Remember on my Packard Bell Multimedia D135, which is now owned by YouTube user Power Mac Galaxy, who really needs to make a video about that computer sometime, by the way, if you're watching. I had a five, this exact same five and quarter inch floppy drive in there for a short time. Wish I remember how I put it in there. <laughs> but that was back in 2012. So, I guess I'll take this other back out just to make it a little bit easier. We'll put it back in once I'm good and ready. I think I just have to yank it out. And there we are. That won't do us any good anymore, but okay. Now what we need to do is just put it back up like this. And get the five and quarter inch floppy drive positioned into place. I really should have brought my screw collection over here, but I did not. Way too uh, think ahead there, Billy. First, while it's let's just go ahead and plug the uh, power connection into it. Okay, just double checking myself. Yeah, these Molexes aren't really long enough to do that, so I guess we'll wait till we get it positioned. Good, I think. I think. There's some cords uh, getting in the way of it. Yep, and there certainly is. It's quite the uh, power switch cord for the power supply is blocking it. So we'll just have to okay. Now it's lined up as it should. Go over here and find some screws. Okay, there they are. Let's see if I can find one that some that will fit it well enough. I did have this um, five and a quarter inch drive in my. Uh, Legend 1510 Supreme, but with this being a 486 and it will be running Windows 3.1, I figured it would be a much better fit for this particular Packard Bell. Okay, enough rambling now to find some screws. Come on, there's got to be one in here. I should need more than one, but okay, that'll work. There's one. Now, do I, can I find another one like that? Yes, we are. That one's a little bit smaller. But perhaps it'll go.
Let's just get these first two in there so we'll get it secure enough. Okay. small holy oh boy oh, don't you love finding screws that fit <laughs> uh, they're either too big or too small Gotta love how I plan ahead. <laughs> okay, this one's a little bit different, but maybe it'll, as long as it'll go fit in there. Yeah, that one's not appropriate enough. Okay, let's just try this one here. This will fit. Nice if I can find some other ones this size. Because <laughs> that's exactly the size we need. I guess that'll be good enough. I found a penny from 1943. <laughs> That's not a screw. Okay, I'll just try this. Let's see if we'll go on the other side here. This is exciting, huh, folks? Me trying to find screws that fit. <laughs> yeah, it's too big as well. Okay, let me just pause the video before I, so I can find one that fits. <laughs> okay, I think I got it screwed in there. Um, it. Took a while to find everything for screws and that kind of stuff, but we're ready to plug it in. First, we'll give it a put the floppy drive cable into there. We really don't have that many five and a quarter inch floppy disks to use, but it would be nice to have this in here for whenever I do need to use it. Cable in now for Molex. Better to have Molex than no Lex. Can't believe that 
clamps in there. Okay, now we got the five and a quarter inch drive in. Let's put that other blanking plate back in so it doesn't look like a basket case. Okay, that's lopsided. <laughs> This one here, probably, yeah, probably a bit of a bit. Let's hope it is. Because it's got to look perfect. There we go, there we go. Excellent, excellent. Oh. Looks good, huh, folks? <laughs> now, next step CF card is typically not too difficult a process to do. One we're a good spot to be for. Uh, let's see. It'll work. We'll do this top one here. By the way, this is um, all ISA in this machine. No PCI in it whatsoever. Move this slot blank. And slide the CF adapter into place. Yes, it is my dog you're hearing. He's still freaking out over the FedEx truck arriving an hour ago. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Screw it into place. Oh, that went good. <laughs> Just drop the screw. Be right back, I have to find the screw. <laughs> okay, I got the screw. Um, let's try this again. And there we are. Nice and tight. Now we plug in the IDE connection and the power connection. So, uh, let's see. Does this one go like this? And we've got power to it. Now, we'll route this cable around. Good, it's keyed. And there we go. We are done. Now, let's go ahead and christen it with a CF card. Of course, it's upside down. Or maybe it wasn't. All right, there we go. And that's all the upgrades we need to do. So we are ready to go. All we have to do now is, like an idiot, put it back together before we power it on. <laughs> well, first, we'll put this side on. Whoops. Let's go 
was on this side. I flipped it around since I took them off. Okay, we'll wait to screw it in until we get the other panel on. Now for this bigger one. trying to use for that floppy drive. Okay, this one ought to go. Go. Up here. Ah. You can do this. When William first got this machine back in early part of 2013, I believe, it actually had a tape drive in here. I don't think it was original, but the tape drive is no longer here, but that's no big deal to me. I don't have anything to use it with anyway. <laughs> okay. Where the other screws go? <laughs> Obviously not. Oh, here they are. They were hiding under that bag. Okay, just about there. One more to go. And voila. We are ready to fired this thing up once I get it connected. So uh, stay tuned. Um, that will come up right now. Alright, got it hooked up to my KVM. Let's hope for the best here, folks. So first power on. Here we go. Find the right. Okay, that's a good sign. Real-time clock error. Just get drive A error. Errors up the wazoo. Can't get anything to register. Yeah, it's not happy. Reset it. Okay, uh, well, the date is almost right. <laughs> Sorry about the refresh rate, folks. Okay, we'll set the time. It's, uh, okay, uh, not supposed to be done like that, apparently. Not like that either. So it's 15.31. I'll go with 40 seconds. Month is right. Everything is right but the day. It's actually the 27th of 2015. Okay, we got the drive A is correct. Now let's set up the drive B. There we go. That is not right. Okay, it picked up the CF card. That's a good sign. Okay. 
Not sure what the slave is. She's picking up something. I don't know what. Okay, let's see what it does now. No errors. What do we do now? Might be having to take this thing apart again. Yeah, it's not seeing any floppy drive at all. I better open this thing back up. Well, it seems to be a little bit happier now. Um, it was a simple issue. The floppy drive cable was not connected to the motherboard. Go figure. But it's freezing right here. Wonder what the problem is. Be right back. Okay, I'm happy to report that everything is fully, and I mean fully functional in this Packard Bell PB1750 CDT. I had to plug the ID, not ID, the floppy drive cable back into the motherboard, and that's what was causing the floppy drive errors. And we're now ready to um, work with the software end of things. So we're going to restore from a February 1995 Master CD. This will give us the older version of Navigator, all the knowledge, adventure, 3D body stuff. It's not era appropriate to this machine, but it'll still feel right to me. Originally, this, like I said, would have come with the same software as that machine there, but but um, I'm a rebel. <laughs> so, put the boot disc in there. Put the CD in. Uh, switch to the right. and put on the KVM. Really need to clean this room. <laughs> Got too much computer junk going all over the place. Picked up the CD-ROM, and it doesn't want to work. Guys, um, it's time to break the computer open yet again and troubleshoot. Okay, the format is complete. A little concerned because, um, this drive, um, even though it's very much just like um, the CD-ROM out of the uh, Legend 20 CD, is still slightly different in that it uses a different driver. I hope I can get this to work once I get this image installed onto the drive. So we'll get it working somehow. I don't. I, I uh, just need to think of something. Okay, now we're going to restore the files. Probably just going to do a generic format. That'll be just fine. So like I said, this originally came with Windows 95. In fact, its format number was 556001, the same as a 406 CD of all things, <laughs> which uses a totally different motherboard, but anyway. <laughs> it's copying the files over, so as my good friend Jay Wakefield would say, go make yourself a nice cup of tea while this is um, restoring. Okay, we're at the other end now. The restoration was successfully completed. Um, I'm still 
a little concerned with the CD-ROM drive driver um, that this particular software image won't have drivers for it, which this the thing with this is, is that this is kind of a tappy, but not really a tappy. It requires its own special driver still. So um, what I might wind up doing is putting this CD-ROM into the 402 CD and taking that CD writer out of the 402 CD and putting it in this one because this is the exact same model CD-ROM that came with the 402 CD so I know it would work in there and when I if I put that CD writer in here I can just use a general Atapi driver for it with no problem however I would not like to do that because I sort of wouldn't mind keeping this original but anyway let's see what we've done Reboot. Okay, I have a feeling this isn't going to work. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it will. Nope. I'm going to have to do a little bit of more off-camera troubleshooting. So I will be back after a while. Okay, we are actually done. Um, turns out I was able to find a master CD from July 1995, which happens to be one of the very last master CDs with the 9495 software pack on it. And it worked with the PB1750 CDT complete with the proper CD-ROM driver. And not many people will care about this unless you're a big Packard Bell fanatic like I am, but not only is this the old version of Navigator, which is 2.0, technically this is Navigator 2.1 because well, it looks normal t right now. I got the hallway. But hey, what's this? There's a different room here. That's right, folks. We have a... Um, this comes with a special room for Navigator called the Study. I haven't really used it much, but it kind of reminds me of the living room in Navigator 3.x. So you get access to your audio stuff up here, audio rack and everything. This will take you back to the 2D uh, menu. There's the fax work stuff, the virtual remote control, telephone answering machine, and that picture of that family does absolutely nothing except look like a complete weirdo. <laughs> and also you get this little volume knob, little volume lever there. Did not know that, that is pretty cool. And you can click here, go back to the hallway, go to the study, and go to the main menu. So yeah, that is pretty cool. Um, I think I will probably end this video here and do a follow-up video once I have all my software and all that good stuff installed. So um, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. This is Billy Core signing off.